SpaceX seems to have the answer. To heighten anticipation, the company's CEO, Elon Musk, has further fueled the excitement by announcing a firm launch date. Simultaneously, India has made significant progress towards its future endeavors. In contrast, China's aerospace sector has undergone an unexpected change in leadership. There's a lot to discuss. Let's talk more about it in today's episode of NR Studio, which marks the end of 2024. Without further ado, let's get started. 2025 promises to be a very exciting period for SpaceX, especially with regards to the progress of the Starship program. The expedition began with Flight 7, which has attracted considerable attention and activity in recent weeks. After undergoing a vigorous static fire test, Flight 7's components were transported back to the production facility for a thorough inspection and further preparation. B-14 returned to the site on December 10th, followed by Ship 33, which arrived a week later on December 17th. These evaluations are critical steps to ensure that both phases are fully prepared for their upcoming milestone, the transition to the launch pad. A hint of the upcoming transition to the launch pad emerged via a recently released road closure itinerary. True to the established timeline, the B-14 successfully relocated to the Mega Bay Gate on December 30th. At exactly 4.13 p.m. that afternoon, the B-14, firmly secured in its transport bay, made its official exit from Mega Bay. The B-14's striking features were clearly visible. The crown, also known as the hot staging ring, was clearly visible perched atop the booster. This is a critical component of SpaceX's progressive design strategy for Starship launches. Furthermore, SpaceX engaged in conspicuous activities involving the grid fins, presumably to alleviate concerns that were highlighted earlier this month. Observers had identified possible concerns regarding the upper segment of B-14 during its post-static fire evaluations on December 10th. However, these assessments appeared to validate the booster's preparedness. The transportation of the boosters to the launch pad required roughly two hours. At the time of this update, B-14 had arrived at the midpoint of the chopsticks, indicating its forthcoming elevation onto the orbital launch mount, OOLM. Once deployed, B-14 will remain stationary until S-33 arrives to join its vicinity. S-33, however, arrived at the production site subsequent to B-14, and it is probable that its evaluations are still in progress. This process holds particular importance, as S-33 represents the inaugural prototype of Starship Version 2, establishing elevated anticipations regarding its functionality and attributes. The principal systems subject to examination encompass the heat shield, engines, and flaps. Speculation further enshrouds the potential integration of a payload into S-33, enhancing the intrigue surrounding this significant flight. Given the current operational momentum, S-33 is anticipated to be launched later this week. Upon its arrival at the launch pad, it will be positioned on B-14 for the purpose of integration testing. The timeline indicates that a wet res rehearsal may be scheduled for the second week of January, potentially on the 6th. Nonetheless, as is customary, validation will be contingent upon the latest road closure timetables. Upon the completion of the WDR, SpaceX will conclude its preparations, which include the installation of the Flight Termination System, FTS, thereby setting the stage for the much-anticipated launch. In reference to the forthcoming launch, Recent advancements have elucidated the timeline for Flight 7. Recently, the FAA's advisory provided information indicating that January 10th has been established as the principal launch date, with alternative dates ranging from January 11th to the 16th. Although this document was subsequently removed, any concerns regarding its accuracy should swiftly be alleviated. In response to an inquiry on Platform X, Musk concisely affirmed the date, indicating 10th. Provided the timetable remains intact, Flight 7 is poised for launch on January 10th, 2025, merely 52 days subsequent to Flight 6. This turnaround time, although marginally extended compared to the interval between Flights 5 and 6, signifies a notable enhancement over previous durations. Much of this advancement can be ascribed to the optimized FAA approval process, as the FAA currently evaluates a proposal for up to 25 Starship launches in 2025 which could further reduce turnaround times, potentially averaging merely two weeks between flights. This rhythm would correspond with SpaceX's lofty objective of executing two flights each month. Are you prepared for Flight 7? Kindly indicate your readiness by commenting 7 below.
We encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our channel to remain informed about SpaceX's advancements into the future. Returning to the Starship, in light of recent advancements, we anticipate a series of further enhancements to both the vehicle and its supporting infrastructure at Starbase. Commencing with B-14, this represents the inaugural pairing with Starship 5-2, which has been substantially fortified. The structure of the booster has been fortified with stringers to enhance its durability. Furthermore, in response to certain testing discrepancies, modifications have been implemented to the grid fin system. These enhancements are of paramount importance as SpaceX intends to utilize the Mechazilla arms to retrieve the booster during the upcoming flight. In addition to enhancements to the grid fins, the engines will undergo upgrades designed not only to facilitate navigation and deceleration, but also to mitigate the risk of fires similar to those encountered during Flight 5. In a comparable vein, we can anticipate significant transformations regarding Ship 33. The enhancements made to its thermal protection system, control surfaces, and overall architecture have been the subject of extensive discourse. However, it is possible that additional modifications remain undisclosed. These enhancements will be pivotal in facilitating S-33's ascent, conducting in-space maneuvers, and achieving successful re-entry and landing. The robust ground system infrastructure underpins and enhances Starship's performance. The chopstick apparatus has been enhanced with newly designed lifting pins to suit the V2 iteration of the Starship. Both the OLM and the protective wall have undergone reinforcement and repainting, effectively positioning them for the rigorous launch cadence anticipated in 2025. On Red Pad B, advancements are being made on the launch tower. Components such as the OLM, flame bucket, and chopstick systems have been captured in advanced stages of preparedness indicating an impending installation. With these comprehensive preparations in place, SpaceX is well positioned to escalate its operations promptly upon receiving the go-ahead for the next launch. This momentum will undeniably enhance SpaceX's competitive advantage, propelling humanity closer to achieving lunar and Martian exploration. Are you prepared for what lies ahead? Having explored the latest updates on Starship, let us now turn our attention to India and its recent strides in space technology. At 11.30 a.m. Eastern on December 30th, the Indian Space Research Organization achieved a significant milestone with the successful launch of the PSLV-C-60 rocket, which deployed two satellites designated for the space docking experiment, SPADEX, into orbit. This mission represented a pivotal achievement, showcasing India's docking technology for the first time an indispensable capability for constructing a space station and facilitating the future return of lunar samples. Subsequent to the mission, S of ISRO assumed the role of chairman. Samanat conveyed his enthusiasm, stating, I am genuinely pleased to announce the successful execution of the PSLV-60 launch for the SPADEX mission. The rocket successfully positioned the satellites in their designated orbits. The two satellites designated Chaser and Target each possess a mass of approximately 220 kilograms. They are engineered to autonomously rendezvous and dock in orbit whilst performing a range of experiments. As per the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, following the successful docking and subsequent rigidization, a demonstration of electrical power transfer between the two satellites will take place prior to their undocking and separation, enabling the commencement of their individual payload operations. With an anticipated operational lifespan of up to two years, should everything proceed as intended, the satellites may achieve their inaugural docking on January 7th. Emphasizing the critical importance of this technology, officials from ISRO remarked that it is vital for advancing India's space aspirations, including the mission to land on the moon. The collection of samples from the moon, the construction and functioning of the Bharatiya Antaraj Station, BAS, among other initiatives. In-space docking technology proves indispensable when numerous rocket launches are necessary to accomplish shared mission objectives. A significant undertaking that hinges on this technology is the Chandrayaan-4 Lunar Sample Return Mission, scheduled for 2028. This mission will incorporate a sample return vehicle alongside a return capsule. India's advancement highlights its resolute ambition to emerge as a significant contender in the global space race. With these remarkable advancements, it is apparent that ICE-RO has established itself as a formidable entity. Let us observe the extent of their progress in the forthcoming years. For our concluding update, 
Let us redirect our focus to China, where a notable transition in aerospace leadership is currently taking place. English, Zhang Kujiang, the current head of the China National Space Administration, CNSA, is set to step down after more than six years in the job, having taken office in May 2018. Zhang will be replaced by Zhang Zhongdu, whose distinguished career includes a stint as president of Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, various leadership positions at the China Academy of Machinery, Science and Technology, and most recently, a role as one of the vice ministers of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology in early 2024. Under Zhang's guidance, China has made significant progress in lunar exploration, Mars missions, and the construction of its space station, while simultaneously preparing for ambitious lunar efforts and the prospect of a permanent lunar base. Zhang Zhongdu is poised to build on these achievements to drive further innovation in China's space efforts. However, the sudden and somewhat unexpected change in leadership has prompted some scrutiny. Favorable transitions often involve reappointments, promotions, or retirements. So at 63, it makes sense that Zhang is considering retirement. The announcement made on December 26 revealed Zhang's removal from his post as party secretary of the State Administration for National Defense Science, Technology and Industry, suggesting possible underlying issues. Given that the Sastin leader simultaneously oversees both the CNSA and the China Atomic Energy Authority, your CAEA, this change could have far-reaching consequences. NASA, by contrast, is poised for a leadership change, with Jared Isaacman being tapped to replace Bill Nelson. In contrast to China, this transition signals a constructive and deliberate evolution. Nonetheless, the trajectory of China's space program under Zhang Zhongdu's leadership appears to be shrouded in uncertainty. The focus is on the impact of this leadership transition on the country's ambitious space agenda. That's it for today's episode. See you next time.